Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today a puzzle that is not quite a Sudoku. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But today, March the 1st, very excitingly, we have released the uh, new Sudoku hunt, the Patreon reward for the month. It's based on the Seven Wonders of the World. Do have a look at that on Patreon if you're already subscribed. Worth subscribing on Patreon if you're not. There are seven very accessible puzzles to have a go at, all Sudoku variants of various sorts, some new, some old. And uh, we really think you'll enjoy the hunt, especially if you get to the meta puzzle and put together a final answer for us. So do give it a go. Um, we certainly hope you'll enjoy it and trust you will. Uh, also, of course, on Patreon, Simon yesterday posted his frankly incredible solve of Fistema Fell's frankly incredibly difficult. Um, well, this was another puzzle variant. So, I mean, we've had three non-Sudokus in various places over the last two days, including the one I'm about to do here, assuming I get through it. Um, but yeah, it was a bizarre mixture of yin yang and what what was the other one um i don't want to say nurikabi but i can't remember philomeno that was it it was a mixture of philomeno and yin yang and it was brilliant i mean it was an unbelievably interesting puzzle to my view so again Great content on Patreon. They're not the only things on there. There's been plenty of other stuff lately. Uh, it really is a thriving community now, and uh, we're delighted to bring you that stuff. So do have a look. Of course, there's also our apps as well. We're still working hard on an Arrow app, Arrow Sudoku app as well. So that brings us, I guess, to this puzzle, which came in from uh, IHNN. I don't know that we've solved any puzzles by IHNN before. I'm not attempting to pronounce it partly because I couldn't and partly because um, the name is in capital letters, so I don't think I'm meant to. Anyway, this is a zero TomTom. -tom. What is TomTom? -tom? Now, you may have come across TomTom -tom before, either under that name, which I think is based on Thomas Snyder's name, or as Ken Ken. Um, Although there may be very slight rule differences between the two and more variation allowed within TomTom. -tom. So I'll explain the rules. We have, well, and this is a special one as well. We have a, a nine by nine grid that uses the numbers zero to eight, not one to nine, but zero to eight in every row and column. Uh, numbers can repeat in the cages. The cages almost always, but not always, have numbers in the corner, and sometimes they have mathematical operators. So you will see that we can use plus, minus, times, or divide. Uh, I'm not actually sure there's any minus instances, but you can use plus, minus, times, or divide. Um, an important point to mention that I don't think that was in IHNN's rule set, but I think is always true of these puzzles, is that if you're using minus or divide, you take the largest digit in the cage and subtract um, every digit from that or divide that by every other digit in the cage. And that will give you the number. So for instance, let's, yeah, I mean this one divide, the largest number in this cage divided by all the others will give you one. So effectively three of them have a product of the other one. That's the other way to look at that cage, I guess. Uh, so some of these cages, we may be able to tell what the, what the operator is straight away. Others, we won't. Many, we won't, frankly. Um, and we've also got to slightly reset our minds to use the number zero to eight, knowledge bomb. They add up to 36, not 45. Um, I doubt that we'll be able to use that since we're not really using boxes or anything. So I don't know, maybe we will, maybe we won't. But do give it a try on the link under the video. We've often been asked to do Ken Ken and Tom Tom. We've almost never done anything like it. So I'm intrigued to give this a try. And I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. Um, yeah, like in the corners, I've got a two plus. That has to be zero and two. One can't repeat in a column, even though it can repeat in a 
cage. We get a zero and one down there as well. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the beginning of this is just picking off cages where we know the constituents 14 times has to involve a seven. And I may have already run out of cages where I can pick up the constituents. Um, ah, look, yes, this is good. This is a six cage, six plus. Now four digits, so it's clearly, well, hang on. I was gonna say it's gonna have repeated digits. I'm actually not sure. But the minimum, the minimum here is one and three, which makes four. The maximum is adding those two up to five. So they are a one with a three or a four. This pair has to have a zero. It does, it does, it does, it does. It's either zero, one or zero, two. Sorry, I'm just a little unsure of some of these basic additions. Right, this cage has to have a zero because it multiplies up to zero. So now that cell can't be zero and zero is pointing at those cells. We can put the zero in actually got, well, a sorted digit in the grid, at least a cipher, but then we can put in two and zero there as well. Um, oh yeah, it's, actually there's, there's a pattern of these pentominoes down here. Oh yes, I should mention, this is part of IHNN's pentomino puzzle pack, um, which we will link to in the description field, which uh, he created a while ago, has had very good feedback. Um, this is the last puzzle in it. I don't know if it means it's the hardest. Uh, I haven't tried the others, but interesting. Now that can't be zero. So yeah, the link will be provided if you want to try any of his other puzzles after this. Now, okay, getting a bit stuck here. So there are, there are 11 and 13 cages. Now I know they have to be additions because they're prime numbers. That 14, ah, oh yes, that I was leaving because it could have been two times seven or eight plus six. I was actually thinking it could be nine plus five, but remember nines are not in this puzzle, so it can't be. And now it can't be two times seven because the two has gone. So that is a six, eight pair. This 24K, yes, there are no nines. So this is a multiplication. Um, it's got to be one. Oh no, it could be two times three times four, couldn't it? I was gonna say it had to, uh, that's definitely true. So there are three possibilities there. I'm not gonna fill them in straight away because they clutter up the cage quite a bit. Um, now, 96, right, that clearly a multiplication. 8 times 12, so 8 times 4 times 3, or 8 times 6 times 2. There's no other way of getting there. It's got to have an 8 in it. We know where that goes now, there, because of the 8s pointing this. And now this can't be 6 times 2, clearly, for due, two reasons. Now we have to fit 1, 5, and 7 in the top row. That's a 5, 7 pair. One goes into this this cage that has become totally useless to us. Any digit can go into it because it multiplies by zero. It's going to be correct. Um, total chocolate teapot of a cage. 16. There's even a multiplication. It could be as well as several additions. That's not that helpful. Now, what about this one? Ah, yeah, this can't have a zero in it. Yes, I don't know what symbol you'd get if you had a zero in a division cage. You'd kind of, oh, I suppose either zero or infinity. No, it would have to be infinity because zero is not the highest number. I doubt that the constructors even thought about <laughs> that. But I'd love to see one of these puzzles with an infinity in a cage. Um, anyway. Uh... I'm assuming that something divided by zero is infinity. My maths theory might be at fault there. Anyway, sorry. Right, this doesn't have a zero in it. And indeed, what, what three digits can multiply up to another digit? One time, it's gotta have a one in it. I'm gonna put that in one of these cells. One times two times three is six. One times two times four is eight. They're the only ways to do it. Ah.
one. Well, I'm okay. Let's let's take out where I put in one, two, three, four, six, or eight. These can't have a one. I'm actually putting that back now. These must. Oh, what am I doing? These must have a one. Oh, these can't have an eight. Uh, ooh, and one and one are a X wing in rows four and f oh, that can't have a one anymore. That's zero and two. Sorry, this is one and three to make up the six total. So let us remove the pencil marks. Ah, two and seven are looking at that. So zero and two go in. Now these can't be a two. Ah, and the cage, that can't be a two either, because that's looking at it. And the cage has to have a two in it, whether it's one, two, four with a product of eight or one, two, three with a product of six. So the two now goes in there and the one goes in there and we can fix the three and the one. That's really pretty. Oh, I was just about to fill in three, four here in the seven cage, but... That is using old Sudoku, killer Sudoku techniques. It could be zero and seven. I must remember the zero is possible. Um, right, two, one. Clearly there's no eight in the cage now. This is a six and a three. I don't know why seven ever got there. Three, six pair, looking up at this, that's resolved. Now, what have we got to put in down here? Two, five, and seven. Well, this two cage must be a minus using seven and five. Um, at some point during the solve, I have no doubt I will omit something in thinking about it from the maths because there's just so much new to think about. Uh, do feel free to comment on it. Don't hate me for it. Now, let's see what else have we got. That has to be a minus now, but it just needs two consecutive numbers from four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, oh, can this be two, three, four still? It would be, no, it can't. There's two looking at every cell in it. Brilliant. So there is a one in it now. Ah, but it's still, I don't know whether it's three, eight, which would have to be that way round, or a six, four pair. Now, whichever it is, we've got a virtual six, eight pair achieved here. Uh, okay, which means that this cell can't be six or eight. So that's five or seven going with eight or six here. Uh, doesn't quite give me anything. Interesting though. Uh, this cage cannot be a multiplication now because I think the only multiplication possible would be one times two times eight and that cell can't be any of those digits. Um, so it's an addition. Does it have to have eight with three, five, or two, six, or one, seven there? No, because it could be, oh, it could be seven, six, three, or seven, five, four. There, sorry, there's too much addition possible there. Um, right, what else can we do? These zeros haven't really resolved themselves much at all. That can't be a zero, but... Some of these rows are just not any use at all. Oh, that, there's a three looking all the way across the grid. Poor scanning by me, but I've picked it up now. Ah, so this can't be a six, which means this can't be a four. And that doesn't fix that cage at all. Ah, oh, what about this zero minus cage? Now, I had thought that zero minus had to have a zero in it. I'd been thinking, oh, well, you know, if you had an eight as the biggest number in the cage, you can't take four different digits away from that to get to zero. But of course, it doesn't have to be different digits. But that doesn't mean there's a zero in it. And this one doesn't have a zero in it. Where these are positioned is ruling zero out of it. What it does mean, therefore, is there are repeat digits in it. Um, 
8 could be, if it's 8, could be made up of 1, 1, 2, 4, or 2, 2, 1, 3. 7 could be made up of 1, 1, 2, 3. I suppose even 6 could be made up of 1, 1, 2, 2. But... Oh, look though, these cells, they're being seen by a 0 in both positions, a 1 and a 2. Ah, so the minimum of those two cells is 3 and 4. And that, given there's no zeros, is going to be too much for the high digit to be up here. So the high digit is in one of these two cells. It's probably a... Oh, and yeah, how are you going to get a repeated digit in? Which has to be 1 or 2, but they 1 and 2 can't be in this, in the bottom cells here. So the repeated digit has to repeat in those two. And it's... I it's either one or two. Oh, that's weird. I'm sure that logic is right, though. Um, yeah, and there's either, if it's one, what's the absolute minimum we could have? One, two, one, and a three here, seven. So there's either a seven or an eight here, definitely. Um, and either a three or a four. Ah, it doesn't quite make a quintuple or even sextuple along there. Oh, bother. Right, what about this seven, which now can't be zero seven? It, oh, it can't be one six either, because there is a six virtual pair in those cells. So it's either two, five or three, four. Now, if it was two, five, we would know what the repeated digit was there, but I don't see how to use that. Oh, I just feel I'm almost onto something there now. Five, Yeah, no, that, that is a very different sort of pair from that because this has various ways of being realizable. Those are the same. I'm just going to color them for now because I know they're the same because of the fact that we have to have a repeated digit there. 11K, just looking at it. I don't know how to use that. Oh, it's really interesting. Um, I'm still, I keep looking at this 16 cage, wondering if I can do a bit more with it, but it's tough. Oh, you know, I was suddenly thinking there might be a zero in it, which is the most idiotic thing I could say. Where is the zero in this row? Uh, those three are all seen by zeros. It can't be in the 11. It's not there. It can't be in the 16. So it must be in one of those two. So I'm deleting those zeros. So where is the zero in this row? If it can't be here, it's got to be in this sev seven cage. Ah, oh. ah, oh. and now we know that eight is the biggest digit here. So this could still be two, two, um, two, five, oh, seven. Oh, I don't know what this is, something from yeah, I still don't know. Um, this can't be 7, 4 now. So it's either 6, 5 or 3, 8. That doesn't seem very helpful. Oh, come on. Can I do this now? It's got an 8 in it. 1, 1, 3 and 3 or 4 in either and 2. But if it was 2, 2 three and one. I mean, I don't know. They all seem possible to me at the moment. Okay, keep thinking, keep thinking. Ah, seven's been used up in those columns. I don't know how to use... Oh, 
six eight pair in column four so that's three or four that doesn't actually i could have deleted eight out of it before oh that's a three four eight triple so this is six that is really helpful four there eight at the top that becomes six that does scan down the grid eight there five there this isn't five or four now so that's not two or three ah oh, don't peter out now that was really interesting that is zero two or three that's zero three or seven this one in the nine can't be zero that would kill the cage so it's two three or seven ah this can't be seven because of that seven x-wing up there so this can't be two i think this has got to be an addition that is six or seven and that can't be seven that's low is that right no i've done it the wrong way around sorry this can't be seven so that can be seven so i know two is in one of those cells ah oh of course actually sorry i was going to say i was going to announce that two cannot be repeated there because it's in one of those cells and i've been sitting with a two definitely in one of those cells which proved that before so these repeated cells are ones sorry i hadn't understood that before uh right eight either goes with four one one two or three one one three so we get a two three pair so these are from four five six and seven the minimum they can be is nine the maximum is 13 which means this is five six or eight If that was five six, this is definitely eight, but it could be three eight. Oh, again, just on the verge of a breakthrough, and it's not coming. Right, this is now five or seven. It's got eight and six in the column. Actually, it's had that for ages when they repair. That makes this one six or eight, which I can't resolve. This fifteen could still be a multiplication. One five three much more likely to be any of various additions though i suppose now one th come on keep thinking three two four one six seven can't be there because of this seven x-wing up here so seven in this row is in one of these two cells which gives us a seven x-wing here and that can't be seven it's quite a good deduction even though oh no it places the eight in the cage and now these have to be four two because they can't both be threes in the same column and now we are cooking with some gas seven two that's a zero that's a two. Oh, those zeros can all be eliminated um this is where zero has to be in this cage now is it why have i taken it out of those two cells Okay, I'm not risking that. I may have made a false pencil mark removal. Let's put in seven and two. Um, seven is definitely in those. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, what I might have done here is delete zero as possibilities out of out of these cells, which is not necessarily true because zero could repeat in a zero times gauge anyway let's not worry about that let's just get on with doing some regular sudoku so 201 um what have we got in this column three five and six this is a naked single isn't it Not two one four seven eight in the column three six in the row that's five that's where seven goes oh yeah there has to be a zero in the cage now it's definitely there so maybe my pencil marking was fine for whatever reason i did it before three and six to go in there these can't have a four in oh that's got interesting now 
five six five is possible five seven four is not six seven three is not it is five six five yes that's fine that's not five and six now it's a three eight pair so four and six go in here that well this can't be a four because of the row actually it can't be five or six that is the last possible digit um right the five five can be repeated in the cage but not in the columns so that was very straightforward seven five there seven zero there uh, none of these can be five so the five in the row is here this is clearly even a consecutive number with five and six because that's a minus um seven and eight go in down at the bottom in this unmarked helpless cage which is only there for symmetry i think this is zero and eight we can put them in um this is not a four this is not a six and this is not an eight right so this is the kind of i think this is the cage i haven't really studied much has yes look again it's got no zero in it so using what we learn up here we know it's got a repeated digit which given that it can't be a four has to be in these two cells can't be a zero can't be a two it must be a one um now and there's is there yeah there is definitely a four in the cage because it needs a four in the row so eight must be the big digit four there this is a two very similar makeup to this cage um that is fixing everything else surely we are on the home straight now what a brilliant puzzle i've really enjoyed this absolutely intriguing mental workout frankly seven four zero one zero this is a six to make up the column three and six over here five there three there i don't think i've botched this up too badly right to make up this cage total it's a six so both these sort of corner cages have repeat digits in which is always fun going to throw anybody who's used to killers which don't and there we go uh, i have no idea if the tick is going to like this no, it says that doesn't look right, but it doesn't highlight anything that looks wrong. I think it's just l using the cage totals, I'm afraid. It's being a bit too intelligent um, and not understanding the rules of Zero Tom Tom, which I think I do now. So thanks so much to um, IHNN for sending that in. Delighted to do it on the channel. As I say, his uh, Pentomino pack is mentioned in the description field along with all the other things do have a look at the Sudoku hunt on Patreon and indeed Simon's video of his Fistimafel soul. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.